you have not fallen and he will put the ground back underneath you you have to take the authority Jesus said I give it to you but if you don't take it and use it you're holding a loaded gun while your your adversaries coming at you but you're not pulling the trigger amen Amen. Thank you. Thank you. To God be the glory. Thank you for, for, for praising him. I'm going to start with Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says this. Don't forget this now. Jesus Christ is eternally, say eternally, changeless, always the same yesterday and today and forever. That means he didn't change his plans because the devil spoke. He didn't change his plan. Jesus was never plan B. He was always plan A. What he was yesterday, he is today, and he'll be tomorrow. He's not going to change no matter what. And we have to understand the, the, uh, the title of today's message is, Don't Lose Your Balance. We want to understand that Jesus is here so that we remain balanced. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want to hear you're out there today because God bless it. I got a good word for you. Jesus, let me show you what he did. Let me show you the balance. This is, I don't know if I should even bring somebody up here because I don't know if I want to pay the insurance claim when they fall off this ball here. But this is called a BOSU ball, and these balls are, you're supposed to stand on them and, and balance yourself like this. Now, it looks really easy because I'm a ninja. <laughs> See that? But no, seriously, it's not really that. It's not really this easy. I'm just this good. Well, you want to try it? Who wants to try it? No. Ain't happening. Anybody want to try this? No? I didn't think so. Only somebody that I can't. Who is that over there? Ashley. A no, Ashley. Because you know how to do this. Anybody that doesn't know how to do this? Let's get, let's get, uh, come on, Zephyr. Zephyr, you should be really good at this, man. You squat. See, watch, watch. You go, watch what happens when I go down. Watch this. Right? Ready? Watch this now. Here we go. Go down. Come up. See, I'm still balanced. I want you to try it. You got to get on one end like this and then find your balance. Go. Come on. Come on, Zephyr. I know you can do this. I know you're a big guy. Oh, Lord. All right. Good deal. Now squat down and stand up again. Keep your eyes. He goes, I can squat 500 pounds, but I can't do this. As you were going down, did you see him shaking? Because that's, that's just what happens. It happens with everybody, uh, unless you're a ninja. Okay, can you step off and just stand right there? There you go. So this is what the enemy tries to do to you. We see when you're on, when you're in life, as you're going through life, people are going to pull you and push you off. Now, I don't want you to push me off because I do want to finish this message. But sometimes the people that you're trusting will grab you and they will pull you off. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead and just give me a tug. Okay, and they'll pull you off of the balance ball. They'll pull you off of the course of life that you're supposed to go on. You see, here we go. Gosh, I'm so good at this. Can you just pull me off? There you go. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. This is what happens. So what you got to understand is don't lose your balance. Well, how are you supposed to not lose your balance? He was shaking, going down, and coming back up again. Because you see, always above is the Lord. That's what he puts this here for. Right here. This is, this is what he puts. So it doesn't make a difference what the enemy tries to do to you. As long as you're holding on to the Lord, you're never going to get knocked off balance. Here, pull me right now. You see, pull me. You, I can't. He can't pull me off balance because I'm holding on to that which balances me. Amen? And the enemy can be so tricky that he'll pull the rug out from underneath you. Go ahead and pull the rug out from underneath me. Go ahead and pull that. It doesn't make a difference. You're still holding on. You're still holding on. The enemy cannot take you down. You have not fallen. And he will put the ground back underneath you. 
You see what I'm saying? And you, can, and you live. But you should always go through life with one hand holding that which balances you. Somebody say amen. Whoa, come on, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Now, with that said, the Lord talks about in the Bible that the, that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. So we base everything in life on money. See, we're, we're balanced in life, and then we're everything, money comes our way, and money doesn't. We start shaking, and oh, Lord, I can't pay my bills, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and all this, and, 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 and I can't, my life's unstable, I'm going to fall off. Hold on right here. Hold on right here. You see, there's a difference between poor and po. Some people are poor, some people are po. Let me tell you the difference between poor and po. People that are poor balance, like to meet people that are po to make themselves feel better. I'll say it again. If you're poor, you want to know people that are po because it makes you feel better. But if you balance your life based on the comparison of other people, then you're going to get to a point in life where somebody's going to be better off than you and make you feel better, feel worse, and you're going to start this again. You're going to start all this kind of junk. You're going to get unstable. You can't base yourself whether you're blessed or not based on how someone else is blessed. You base how you're blessed because nothing's going to shake you. Oh, I don't hear anybody out there. Come on, I still can't hear you out there. You see this right here? You cannot be shaken if you understand who Jesus the Christ is. He has the balance rod. He has kept you balanced. The enemy cannot shake you. Cannot shake you. Right now, some of you are feeling pretty guilty because you've let the enemy shake you, but he can't do it. Now listen to this. I want to share this with you. I want to show you how powerful God is. Isaiah chapter 55, it says this. It says, I started talking about this a little bit on Tuesday night. I'll bring it deeper tonight. He says, for the thoughts, for my thoughts, God says, are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So God says, I don't, I don't really care what you think your life looks like right now. My ways and your ways don't jive. So you're seeing the, what you're seeing, and you're feeling off balance. But what you need to do is grab onto that which is above, not beneath, because my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're higher than yours. Amen. This is what he's saying. He says this. He goes, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. So are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So are my, my God in all of heaven. He tried to explain it to us all. He says, I want you to look up. You can't see the end of the heavens. Neither can you see the end of my thoughts. I, you, you can't see the end of the heavens. Neither can you see the end of my ways. As many, as many, as much distance is between you and the end of the heavens, is that's how many different ways I can bless you if you just let me. You getting a hold of that? Somebody getting blessed by this? Okay, listen, watch what he says here. Watch this now. He says this. He goes, um, and as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it and, and return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. I'm going to blow your minds right here. Give me a chance to build this. He says, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. If you can understand that right there, you will never, ever be knocked off balance in your life. You will never let the world take over and throw you off. You will never let the love of money unbalance you with or without. It won't make a difference. You say, well, I don't, am I, you know, what am I doing here? Oh, Lord, here, here, look, this is what we do. Look, watch this, watch this, watch. Here we are, right here. We're on the ball. All of a sudden, you start, honey, I got news for you. What's the news? You got a raise? No, I got fired. Oh, man, are you kidding me? No, you got promoted. Stop. But it doesn't feel like I'm promoting. I don't feel like I got promoted because you're not holding on to that which is comforting you. You're holding on to what you can see, not which is what is higher above the earth than you can ever imagine. Somebody understand this? Anytime somebody brings to you all this kind of stuff, I can't, um, I got news, I got news about uh, cousin Jake who's in jail. He's getting out? No, he's getting saved. That's what Jesus says. He's getting out? Because that's what you want. Those are your ways, but his ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Cousin Jake ain't getting out of jail. Cousin Jake's getting saved in jail, so he never has to go back to jail again. Amen? See how your ways are different? Amen? Somebody say amen out there. Okay, so now watch this. Watch the blood. That was Isaiah 55. Now I'm going to read Isaiah 41. Watch how this puts together now. He says, do not fear anything. 
As long as you're on that, holding on to that, do not fear. Wait, you said that was Jesus, Joe. We're talking, we're in the Old Testament right now. Okay, good. Keep listening. I'm glad you picked up on that. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured that I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, and of salvation. This is what God is speaking right there. He says, indeed. I love it how he says indeed. He says, indeed, all those who are angry with you, they will be put, put to shame and, uh, and humiliated. And those who strive against you will be is nothing and they will perish. You shall search for those who quarrel with you, but you won't find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. They will be nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold you in your hand, hold of your hand, and I am the Lord who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob. You man, men of Israel, I will help you, declares the Lord, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Oh, oh, he said, he said, with my righteous right hand of justice and power and victory and salvation. Then he went and said, the Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Then in Isaiah 55, he said, so the words that go out of my mouth, it will not return to me empty. What is God talking about with Isaiah? What is he trying to say so the words will go out of my mouth? He's talking about Jesus right there. What he's saying is he's like, the words that go out of my mouth that you have not heard yet because Jesus is not here, when he gets here, when he starts speaking the things he's going to speak, you can guarantee that not one of those words are going to be trampled on, stomped on, erased, or put out. They will not return empty. If he says it, that finishes it over, settled, amen? It's not going to change. And he goes on to say the part, he says, he is the redeemer. He is the holy one of Israel. Isaiah 41, he says, fear not. Your enemies will never be able to touch you because I'm sending the holy one of Israel to redeem you. Mm. What are you talking about? How many people know Israel still exists today? How many people know Israel is this big? On the map, it's that big. But no one can touch them. None of their surrounding countries can touch them. None of the enemies can touch them. Their Air Force is one of the best in the United States in the world because no one can touch them because he sent the Holy One. And God says, I will bless you. I will keep you. Those who try to wage war against you will be as nothing at all. No one can wage war against them. They will never be defeated. They will never fail. You pray for the peace of Israel but I'll, and the peace of Jerusalem, but no one will ever be able to touch them. We, because of Jesus, are heirs and joint heirs of Christ, and therefore no one will be able to touch you. No one will be able to knock you off balance. No matter how much you shake, you got the Holy One of Israel that you can grab onto right here. Don't make it how you're shaking. It doesn't make a difference how you're shaking. You got the Holy One of Israel. Sometimes it's really bad. Got to grab on with two. Sometimes the, the ground's taken taken out from under you, it doesn't make a difference. He's there for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And these are the words that went out of God's mouth that will not return void. Here's a few of them. We can go all day, but I'm going to just give you a few of them. One, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He spoke it. It went, came from God's mouth through Jesus, and it will not return void. Thy kingdom come the, through the triumphant Messiah. That's what he's talking about. When you read Isaiah, when you read 41, what is this, a history lesson? What? If you don't understand who he is, then you don't know what you're grabbing onto. You don't know how st stable he is. You don't know. You can't be shaken. Those of you watching online right now, quit. You're, it's three in the morning. Go to sleep. What are you worried for? Hold on. To, go to sleep. You got to get up tomorrow at six. You don't worry about anything. Watch this here. Watch this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will. What is his will? Be what is his will? It's the blessings of all mankind. It's salvation for all mankind. It's peace. It's joy. It's security. It's comfort. The devil says, I'll kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I'll give you life more abundantly. The devil's words will return empty. Jesus's will not return empty. Amen? Oh, come on. I can't, I can't stay on this too long because we'll be here till like tomorrow. Let me keep going. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. I love it. Nothing can stop it. Remember what God said. He said, my words will not return empty. Nothing can stop it. Nothing. So he goes on to say this. He says, and I say to you in verse 18 of 16, Matthew, and I say to you that you are Peter. Oh, I love this. He says, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, death, will not overpower it by prevention of the resurrection of the Christ. Not even hell can stop the resurrection from happening because it is a word that will not return void because it is your balance beam to keep you from ever tripping. Say, I will never 
trip. As long as you hold on to that, you will never trip. You will never be, you'll never be off balance. You'll be never knocked off. You'll be never knocked off. You'll be never knocked off balance, I swear. Anyway, watch this. He says, I will give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will be already done in heaven, and whatever you loose and permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. I have given you the authority. I have set you up to succeed. I have not set you up to fail. Don't lose your balance. Don't lose your balance. Jesus is your balance. Don't lose Jesus. Amen? It's making sense? Now, Luke 10, I love it. Just gonna keep going here. Luke 10, 19, he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. You say, Joe, we always hear these scriptures. When are you gonna use them? When are you gonna use them? No demon in hell can touch you. When you're standing on, your, on life and it starts to get shaky and you can't control it, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? You see, you have to take the authority. Jesus said, I give it to you, but if you don't take it and use it, you're holding a loaded gun while you're at, your adversary's coming at you, but you're not pulling the trigger, amen? It's loaded, it's ready to go. You only need one shot in the name of Jesus. That's it. There you go. Now you're stable again. Use the authority. Oh, come on, man. This is good stuff. Jesus is good. John 15, 11, he says, I've told you this so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. Well, what do you mean my joy will be in you? It's not going to return void. Nothing's going to return void. You want God's joy in you? You better grab onto that. You want God, you want his peace in you? You better grab onto his son. You want, you want the happiness? You want the world to not be able to shake you? You want your boss not to be able to shake you? You want your, now listen, now don't get me wrong here because if you don't go to work on time and you don't do your job on time, don't blame the boss. We gotta, we gotta do what we're called to do. But when the world tries to shake you up and the enemy tries to get in between your marriages and your wife and you and your children and your job and your homes and your finances, he, he just, look at man, he's just rocking the boat. That's all he's doing. He's just rocking the boat a little bit. You think, uh oh, oh. And you, remember, you know how that, you know that, that feeling you get? That feeling you get when you're really nervous? When you go into work on, on uh, Friday and you pick your check up and the boss says, hey, we won't need you anymore. Oh, God. How am I going to tell the wife? You know, the kids are in college, they got braces on their teeth. What am I going to do? <sighs> all right, all right. It's still, I still feel shaky. Well, come on, grab onto it. Don't, it's there. Just hold it. Hold it. And in time, he'll bless you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy your joy, your peace, everything. And his joy, God's joy, send his son to give you life more abundantly. You will not be shaken. Amen? Amen. Now, let me close it up a little bit. Luke 4, I love it. Watch what he says here. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said in Luke chapter 18. Now, don't miss this. God said, my word will not return empty. God said to Isaiah in, in 55, in 41, he says, my righteous right hand, my hand of justice, my hand of power, Jesus is the righteous right hand. Jesus is the hand of justice. Jesus is the power of the word. Jesus is the victor of our salvation. This is who, this is who God was talking about. And can you imagine Jesus standing up in this day, Luke chapter four, verse 18, as we read it, but it was Isaiah chapter 61, because he's, he, Isaiah was prophesying Christ, and he stands up, and Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am about to become the balance beam that cannot be shaken, and there's nothing you can do about it, and he goes on to say, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce and release pardon, forgiveness to the captives, those who have sin, those who, have, those who are, are bound and damned to hell. I have come to redeem you. I have come to strengthen you. I have come to uphold you. He says, and to recover the sight of the blind, not the ones that can't see, but the ones who are too blind to see. Remember what I said a few weeks ago, Bartimaeus and the two blind men could see Jesus, but the Pharisees couldn't. They, they had their perfect sight, but they couldn't see him because they were looking with their eyes, not with their heart. They were looking with their tradition, not with their heart. They were looking with the bondage of we were taught, not with their heart. He says, I have come to recover the sight of those that are blind so their eyes will be open and they can see who the Redeemer of Israel is. Amen? 
He says, to set those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, and crushed by tragedy, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. I have come. I have come to rock your world. Doesn't make a difference at what time in space and time that you appear on this earth. These words are for you. Yes, amen. And he goes on to say this in verse 20. Then he rolled up the scroll. I love it. Rolled up the scroll. Having stopped in the middle of the verse, gave it back to the attendant and sat down to teach. And the eyes of all those in the synagogue were, att- synagogue were attentively fixed on him. He began speaking to them. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. It shall not return void. It will not be changed. Heaven can't shake it. Earth can't shake it. Hell can't shake it. The beam has been put in place. It has been welded by the angel of heaven. It has been sealed by my Father in heaven. Nothing will shake you. No matter how much your life is rocking, you know if you choose, if you choose to reach up and grab hold of that which will never cause you to lose your balance. It's your life. You cannot base it on the person sitting next to you. You can't say, I'm poor, but I'm going to look at Poe so I can feel better. I got to, my wife is yelling at me, but his wife is cheating on him. You can't balance your life based on how someone else's life is worse. You got to hold on to this. Keep your eyes on the balance beam. Don't lose your Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on. And you know, I love it because even it says in Psalms 94, 18, it says, if I say my foot has slipped, your compassion and loving kindness, O Lord, will hold me up. Jesus is the loving compassion and the kindness talking about. Oh my God. See, this was for the people of Israel, but when Jesus came, it's for everybody who holds on. So it really doesn't make a difference, which, but you know, no, no, hold on a second. I have to, we have to remind you that where the blessings are. We have to remind you who the blessings are. We gotta remind, we gotta remind each other. Because look at this, watch this. Um, John and John, come on up here for a second. Watch this, let me just show you this. This will bless you. Little, little, little visuals can, can go a long way. So I'm here, and I'm shaking, okay? And I am so, my world is so rocked that I don't, I don't hold on to this. I, I, I am knocked off of life, and I'm down. Like this. You see, I can't, I can't reach. I can't reach. Come on on the other side of me. I can't reach, guys. This is where you end up. This is why people end up in church sometimes. They can't reach Jesus anymore. What's the job of the pastor, to fix you? No. <laughs> to pick you up, to put you back on, to put you back. <laughs> I should have scripted this. To put you, no, here, grab the arm. Put you back on the ball. Come on, guys. Uh, Lift your hands, place them on the cross, hold on to this so you're stable again. Amen? If I was making a movie, we would have went over budget on that one. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Seriously. So I'm going to finish with this. The other day, I'm sitting over there. My daughter calls me up, and she wants me to babysit the kids before before, uh, they go have the baby. His last date out or whatever before the baby comes. So I said, okay. So I'm, I'm sitting out. I'm hanging out with my, my baby, Faith, who's sitting right there. And uh, she wants to go to bed. Time to go to bed. I had the alarm set. When the alarm went off, I had to put the kids to bed because that's the orders from the drill sergeant, you know, the warden, the mother. So the alarm goes off, and I, I, I put their, their, they don't like that. I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. Come on, guys. We gotta, I want my daddy. I want my mommy. I was, just let's go. Come on. Don't make it hard on me. I gotta, let's go to bed. So we sit in bed. Grace is in one bed. They got twin beds, and Faith's in the other one like this. And I, every night before they go to sleep, they have to have their, their mom or their dad sing them songs. Now, Austin sings the old songs, hallelujah. And Mama sings the new, the new songs, you know, uh, break every chain, whatever it is. So, so I start to sing. I, I don't know the words of anything. I, I just I get lost. I don't know the words of anything. So I start singing. So Faith says to me, she goes, oh, Papa, you're not even singing it right. Just tell me a story about a castle. I promise. I'm not making this up. I said, fine, I'll tell you a story about a castle. So I try to make it godly, and I'm talking about the story and the castles, and I'm like, there was these two little girls, one named Faith, one named Grace, and they all, they were sitting home, and they didn't have much, and they were not happy, and all of a sudden, this box came to the door, and in the box was a beautiful, 
beautiful, beautiful purple dress, a big princess dress. And then another box came, and it was a pink dress for you, Grace. I want the pink dress. Fine, have the pink dress. So <laughs> this is my life. This is how it works. So then I said, and then another beautiful box came, and it had a beautiful tiara in it for you, Faith, to put on. And, and then another one came for Grace, and then a box came with beautiful glittering shoes. She goes, Papa, there's a lot of boxes coming. And I said, I know, but there's surprises in every one of them. And she goes, she got excited because I reminded her, because, you know, to a four-year-old, the story's real. So I'm reminding her that in the boxes are the surprises for you, which made her extremely excited. I'm reminding you today that no matter how shaky your life is, there's a box coming to your door. And if you don't hold on to this, you're going to be on the ground and you're going to miss the blessings as they go by you. Make sure you don't lose your balance. And when you don't, you will hold on to the victor of life so that you can receive the victories in life. Amen? That's all I got. We don't want to leave you today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Word says that the only way to the Father is through the Son. Take a moment and repent for your sins and ask God to help you follow Him on this journey. It's an amazing journey that will bless your life on earth and in eternity. If you've made the decision to follow Jesus today, be sure to get into a church that teaches the Word of God and don't forget to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at orlandofamilychurch.com or 407-462-1358. We'd love to see you. Our church services are every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Hope to see you soon.